head coach of the Texas A&M Aggies, Mike Elko. How about that? Coach, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I know you've been waiting a little bit while, you know. Uh, how are the vibes in Aggie land right now? Spring training starting to kick up. What are the vibes like in, uh, with Texas A&M right now? Yeah, I think the vibes are great right now. I think we, uh, we kicked off spring ball on Friday. I think finally getting out on the grass with our guys was great. I think getting to play some football, starting to implement our scheme, our philosophy, you know, that's, that's what we do this for. You know, and, and it's funny when you take over these jobs, you go so long before you finally actually just get to go out and, and coach these kids and play some football with them. So it was an exciting time this weekend. Now, Coach, two quick questions. All right, no, number one, I haven't played in a long time. So when do we get to put the pads on? How many days do we go in spring before we get to put the pads on? And number two, uh, I, I don't know if you can see this, but we're talking about the vibes. You guys, what's up with this whole, you know, rocking thing when you guys, when you first <laughs> accept the job, you're rocking back and forth. How does this go about? How do you, how do you find this tradition yourself? There it is. We got a little picture. There we for go. Our people, our viewers awesome. watching. How, what is up with that, Coach? Tell me about that. Yeah, I said so from that perspective, I think Texas A&M is such a special place with its tradition and its passion. And uh, when we were here last time, we were fortunate enough to get uh, a real good feel of what game day looks like. And so uh, you get up on that stage and that's the Aggie War hymn and, you know, the band starts playing and the people start swaying. And that's what makes 105,000 people come to life in Kyle Field every Saturday. And so uh, that's just a special part of what we do down here in Aggie land and uh, certainly something we're really excited about. And then in terms of spring ball, you know, uh, you wouldn't even recognize football anymore the way it's set up. We don't get to put pads on. We don't get to hit anymore. We don't get to tackle. We might as well just play two-hand touch anymore. But, uh, no, we, we are, uh, we're helmets the last two days. We'll get full pads tomorrow when we go back out in the field and, uh, you know, hopefully kind of crank up the intensity a little bit this week. I mean, how much – I mean, I would pay money almost to get into some kind of bull in the ring drill, some kind of <laughs> some kind of drill where I get it just to put the helmet back on one more time. It's okay, though. I'll let you guys handle that. Uh, but, Coach, I want to know another perspective that a lot of the Aggie fans are wanting to know about, and we want to get our first view of this this spring will be, and that is the offense under the new OC, Colin Klein. What has that process been like? for your team? And also, what is this offense going to look like as compared to what it was last year? Yeah, I, I think, you know, comparing it, I don't know. I, I know what we're going to do. We want to be able to attack people. And I think mm -hmm. that's one of the things that we talk about a lot is, is how are we going to put pressure on the defense? And uh, people want to tie these offensive packages up into these cute little bows of, you know, spread or pro style or whatever. But I, I think what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to change and dictate tempo. We want to be able to move our personnel around so that we can put people on the matchups and in the areas that we want them to be. And we want to be able to attack uh, and put a lot of pressure on opposing defenses. And I think as you build that, um, you, you know, a big part of that is finally getting out and working with your guys because, mm -hmm. you know, until you actually get hands on with them, see what they can do, see what their strengths are, see how, how they can attack people, uh, it's hard to really, do, you know, you're just doing X's and O's on a board. Uh, we want it to be a little bit more specific to who our players are, what their skill sets are, and how we can truly take advantage of what we have. I love, I love what I'm hearing out of you talking about really the one-on-one -on -one matchups and understand that that's all really football is. When you got the matchup that you want, you go for those things. And uh, what, you, you bring back a quarterback with a lot of experiment, experience in Connor Wegman. Um, I would like to know personally, how much playing time are we looking to anticipate? I know he in, finished the year last year with an injury. So coming off that injury, what are we looking like playing time for him? We're going to try and slowly walk him back in, get him more comfortable. I know you want to get acclimated with some of the new play calls and things of that nature. But you also, I'm hearing, have a nice quarterback battle in, behind him as well between Marcel Reed and Jalen Henderson. Yeah, so obviously Connor comes into spring as our number one, and I think everyone's aware of that. But, you know, like everything, you want competition, and you want competition within your program. And so, you know, Connor's out there now. He's back. He's taking the majority of the reps. He's not – um, you know, 100% back off that injury, but he's enough to, to go out there and do the things that he's got to do to start learning this offense and progressing how he wants to progress. And then, you know, you've got two quarterbacks last year who filled in and, and had some very successful moments. Uh, Jalen Henderson on the back end of the year had a great game against Mississippi State, leading us to a victory. And then uh, Jalen winds up getting hurt on the first series of the bowl game. And Marcel Reed, as a true freshman, steps in and he throws for over 370 yards in the bowl game. And so, um, 
um, you do have these two talented kids that are, are competing every day. And, you know, I think our job as coaches is to kind of make competition a, a backbone of what we are as a program. And so, you know, giving those two young men opportunities to kind of showcase themselves. And you know, at the end of the day, I think everybody knows who the best player is coming out of spring. And that'll be the guy we line up with against Notre Dame. You know, Coach, now that I got you here and you said something, it just really resonates with me. You talk about the competition and making competition your backbone of your program. I love that, right? Competition is what brings out the best in everybody. I, I love when I get to compete. That's why I love doing what I did for so long. But in today's time, when you push kids and make them want to compete and understand that competition is what we're going to do, a lot of these, some people, tuck tail and run. How do you continue to keep it competitive but still maintain the roster and also wanting guys to still be a part of them that right here in Aggie Lane, that we're still adding value to you, no matter whether you're a starter or not. The competition is the will be the result of what it is, but still staying here in today's time when we get the transfer portal. Yeah, I just think you have to be honest and you have to be open with kids when you talk to them. And I think – uh, for the for the history of time, competition drives people to become what they're capable of becoming. Uh, nobody gets to their best ability without a little bit of, of nervousness about having to be my best or, or I'm not going to be able to continue to do what I do and what I love to do. And so, um, you know, listen, we don't shy away from this new era of college football. I, I think we embrace uh, the opportunities that our players get. I think that's really awesome that they get NIL and they get to be involved in some of these things, but there's some core values that make a really good football team and, and we're not going to shy away from that part of this. We're going to continue to develop men. We're going to continue to help them elevate to become what they're capable of becoming and um, you know, hopefully we'll get known as the program who, who still does things the way they're supposed to be done in the game of football. I, I like that. I like that. How, all right, Coach, now let's talk about, I want to talk about a receiver who who really stood out to you guys last year, really came into his own. Noah Thomas really made yeah. some flashes as a big-time receiver at times. How do we get him to be more consistently to where we saw the talent, really flashed on tape, but how do we get that week in and week out? Uh, how are you guys talking to him about that and pushing him to be able to reach the potential that he has? Yeah, I mean, listen, he's, he's everything you want in a wide receiver. He's got a great catch radius. He's tall. He can get in and out of breaks. He can separate on people. And he certainly showed last year he's got an ability to go high point the ball and, and make plays. And I think, you know, as a program, we're trying to drive a higher level of consistency. And I think that starts with, you know, one, your offseason strength and conditioning. And I thought we had a great winter uh, with Coach Tommy Moffitt and, and the different things that we did in that room and instilling some uh, of those types of values into the program. And I think it continues with practice habits and I think you become a consistent person when every single day you go out on the field you play and prepare consistently and I think that's uh, there's no secret to it there's no shortcut there's no secret sauce to how you become a consistent football player you go out and you work and, and that's I think as a program that's become our mentality this spring is is we want to go out there we want to enjoy getting on the grass together we want to compete uh, and we want to become what we're capable of becoming uh, not only as individuals but also as a program here for Texas A&M football. All right, Coach, I wanna, uh, we're going to get your way out of here on this one. I want to talk about fan excitement in <laughs> Aggieland. Number one, how's it been now that you're the head coach of Texas A&M and also leading up to this season? I, I think we're going to show a schedule here about some of the games that are going to be coming up for you guys. And uh, you guys, it's going to be a tough one. The SEC has continued to expand. You're staying at eight games. But at all about the excitement of who all you guys are going to be facing. We got Arkansas. You're at Florida. I mean, starting off the season versus Notre Dame. Can we just talk about that excitement? What are the fans feeling? What are you hearing at Aggieland right now? Yeah, listen, there's, there's no program in the country that has a bigger fan base than Texas A&M. And there's you might no be right about stadium that. that. There's no stadium that rocks on Saturdays quite like Kyle Field. And so uh, our excitement is at an all-time high. I think got, people are excited about the direction of this program. I think we have a tremendous fan base that's going to come out here this fall and, and get behind this team and um, be loud and be boisterous and be the 12th man that they've been for years. Uh, and I think when you look at the home slate, I think it lines up really good. I think we've got uh, some really really high level games that are going to happen in College Station and Kyle Field this fall and um, that's something not only our program's excited about but you know these fans are going to show up uh, in big time and until you've been in Kyle on a Saturday night primetime kickoff um, you know you got a bucket list item you still got to check off. Well coach uh, the bucket list item I got to check off is actually I got to go to Yale practice the day before the game that's there what I go. have to get done. There so you go. 